Colin, 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 How many you got, Darren? Just the one up here now. Drop that one off there. How many you got, Roger? One? One, yeah. Right, Neil, if you could just sign now, please. Oh, lovely. Thanks very much. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. nine. Okay, that's a bit of luck. Good. And four flags. Four flags, yep. One, two, three, four, five, four. Okay, four flags. Good. Thanks so much. I'm Fripp, I'm the um, site supervisor on the pylons for Salamis painting. I basically run all the line for, for Salamis. Well, this line down here for seaboard, 50, 51, 52 towers. Just making sure everything's organised properly, safety. Making sure all the towers are painted properly. Tell Barbara I love her. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Tell her I miss her. Well, you've got three three types of towers. You've got a 132, which is 132,000 volts, 275, which is 275,000, and 400, which is the same again, 400,000. And you have a, like a dropper, it's, we call them droppers, and that's where the, the insulators are pointing downwards from the arms. And uh, strainers are where the tension towers are where the insulators are sticking out. Now, there's there's 50, more or less 50 towers on this line, and they'll give us a four week outage, which means they can switch the towers off for four weeks. Prime for one day, basically, get, depending on how many people are on the, on the line, probably get six towers, 12 towers done in one day, then we silver up the following day, which is top coating. Everything that's primed gets done in silver, and then the linesman can come behind us the day afterwards and de earth and then keep on moving ahead of us so nobody's standing around waiting for work. When the lads are up in the air, they're making money. When they're on the floor, they're not making any money. People paint them differently, uh, but, but most people uh, We'll get paint the arms and, and the boxes on the way up because, as I say, it's just straightforward. Uh, the two legs in, if you're doing half a tower, if you've got the arms and boxes, and you just come straight down the legs in. Well, mainly the things you've got to learn is where, where to paint and where not to paint as you're climbing over the tower. If you paint yourself out, it means you've got to climb over wet paint, which is quite dangerous. Obviously, there's people that do it different ways. Everybody's got their own way of painting. Um, but basically, it all boils down to the same thing, that you, um, it's the knack of knowing where to paint uh, for your next move. 
That's a D2. Uh, Linesman call them suspension towers, we call them droppers. That one down in the valley there, that's uh, an angle, which is a D60. We call them strains or angles. It's a, it's a D60. And then further along you've got another dropper, and you've got a D10, which is another, another strainer as well. Probably get three more towers down, down to that angle today. Maybe four if we're lucky on the weather, get to, get to the, the D2, past the D10 over there. So that'll be another one, two, three, another four towers, hopefully, weather, weather permitting. That'll be um, what's about nine or ten completed today then. Years ago, uh, people never used to wear gloves. I'm not always renowned for being a sissy for wearing them. I've always worn them. It's a simple reason I watched a few programmes about dermatitis. I thought, well, that's not for me. On a 275, you're probably averaging between about 15, 16 gallon to do an half a tower. And on a 400, you could, you could get from anything to what, between 50 to about 80 gallon. If you've got a partner like me and Dave, then we each know his own bit of the tower that we've got to paint, and then we just meet up in the middle. So we're sort of putting the tower in half all the time, and uh, we're on the ground together. Zaps, yeah, you do get zaps, but uh, that's when you paint like um, uh, live, live when the uh, the actual towers uh, live, uh, you're just painting the bodies, but you do get a lot of pickup. Um, it isn't, it's not the zap itself, uh, the zap itself isn't that bad. I mean, you can feel it like, I mean, it's, 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 it's not something you want, you want to happen, don't get me wrong, but, uh, but it, it, it's the not knowing when you're going to get zapped is the, is the thing. You get induction with the line switched off picks it up from the other side and throws it back onto the wire again. So even on a dead line without having drain earths on, you can still get 10,000 volts in a dead circuit. <sighs> it's all come out for, uh, when I was in the army. Uh, I come out. I couldn't keep a factory job. Keep, kept on getting myself into a lot of trouble. And out the blue, my dad suggested that he take me back on onto the pylons. The first day I climbed up, I didn't think I was scared of heights. Boy, hell! Mm -hmm. I only went about thirty feet. My legs went. My legs was like jelly. I was holding on. Clinging on, and they're saying to me, Let go. Well, my dad's saying, Loose that bar. I'm going, No, I ain't loosing nothing. <laughs> I want to get down, I want to get down. He says, No, you ain't. But he wouldn't let me get down. Fair play to The 
There probably isn't a tower painter in the country that's uh, got any decent kneecaps. I mean, we're kneeling on bits of steel, like L-shaped uh, steel, and it's sort of like, it digs into your knee. I think I've got arthritis in both wrists. Uh, I haven't got a decent kneecap. Uh, my back hasn't been any good for goodness knows how many years. Um, I could do with a, I could do with, I could do with, I'll keep the head and change the body, to be quite honest. You do have to put up with a lot of uh, discomfort, obviously, in the, the job itself, like the physical, mental strain. Then uh, depending on what kind of person you are, there's been away from home. I mean, you can be away for three, even four weeks. It just all depends. Uh, and obviously, you have to make the best of working away to the best way you can. Um, but I do feel sorry for the wife and the children. But it's like having two separate lives, I suppose. Um, it is two separate lives. Yeah, bloke. Feeling into parts of Berkshire, perhaps into Surrey and parts of Sussex as well, but it isn't going to be as extensive as it was by this morning. Yo! That's a good shot. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we're badging away, like, it's four of us at the table badging away. And, uh, dive, what? Cows are eating your uh, sandwiches. I think we'll stop them. <laughs> <laughs> How? What's he gonna throw something at it? <laughs> so he gets this, he gets this can of paint, and he flings it at this cow. And we never kill that cow. It's beyond me. I tell you, <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe it. We landowners, yeah, because they've always got grievance against the board or the grid, either for not paying compensation for this or compensation. For this. And we, we get the brunt end, you know. We, we get shotguns and dogs and everything. Even had bulls. They leave the bull in the field, and you've got to run around the bull. You know, it's, it's good. For, it keeps you fit, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> There's another one there, mate of mine. Booed his cow. I mean, these are true stories, here, by the way. He booed his cow. Boo you, and it leapt this fence. Boo you, and it leapt this fence. Honest, on my life, it leapt this fence. Yeah, and I'm not talking about small. It leapt it. Look that. <laughs> Show you a problem. Yeah, too I'll old. Show you a problem. Right. That is what you call paint. You're supposed to use that. That was thin as it is. Well, there's the continuous yellow lines are driving axis, and the staggered ones are walking axes. But well, I've got nothing from there to there, so we'll have to find out how to get to them. So, what's that mean then? 
we can't get to them basically. That's why I'm looking at these towers here. There's no there's no road to them, no track or nothing. And they're all in like ploughed up fields as well, all fields which have been planted. And they, well, we can't drive to them obviously. But there's no there's no routes to them at all. So yeah. we'll have to either phone the farmers up or see the lines and see which way they've been. Go. About 300 gallon. Anybody who wants to buy some? <laughs> stressful job. That's what it is. It's a very, very stressful job. I've worked practically every month of the year. Yeah. Um, usually start around March, and it will go on till October, um, November time. By the time that sort of uh, October, November comes round, in one way you're thinking, well, I could be out of work now, which isn't very good. But then you're thinking as well, well, thank God for that, because I've had enough of those this year. And uh, maybe I won't do them, maybe this will be my last year. I've been saying that for a few years, and I'm still painting them, but maybe this will be my last year, I don't know. Yeah, and now you're all going on, di on different tracks, which I found very irritating. Yeah. I'm amazed because it's a country place and you must have heard of crops before. Yeah. Well, well, we'll stick to this one. If you can stick to that one yeah. and make sure, because you'll be back two or three days, won't you? You've uh, got to put more than one coat on, haven't you? Yeah, that uh, probably be finished there, uh, maybe tomorrow or the day after. Yeah, so make sure, uh, if you uh, make sure whoever comes tomorrow yeah. also knows to keep to the same track, yeah, and where it is. Oh, is it somebody different? Yeah, it's possible it may even be finished today. What, two coats? Yeah. Hmm. And if they cannot, you know, intrude yeah. too far into the field. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> At the end of the day, it is, it's a cipher's age up there. To me, I'm, I feel as though I'm safer. I'm safer up there than what I would be on the ladder. What with the ladder bowing in and out and all that. It's, it's really safe. I suppose, like, the main danger points are going out on the arms. When you've got to go right to the end. You, you've got to actually literally bend yourself over on the outside and go underneath. Just so as you can get around the nut clusters and that. But that's right at the point of the arm. I make a point of drinking at least a gallon of water a day when it's hot. Once you've got a lining on your overalls with paint. I mean, it must be like 100 degrees in here. Uh, get plenty of salt down there. Stop the cramp. Uh, depending on how hot it really is, I sometimes take my wellies off and wring my socks out a couple of times a day. Save swimming. Truthfully, tip off half a point to sweat out your wellies. The sweat's hanging from me now. Aye, the sweat. 
absolutely hanging out of me now. It's coming out of my gloves. <laughs> I was to bring about six litres of uh, liquid in and uh, the last couple of summers we've had the really warm ones. As soon as that liquid's gone then I'm, that's me, I'm, I'm finished. I mean six litres of uh, water or pop or whatever and that's gone, say in about three, four hours, that's gone. Well that's it then. When you're dehydrated, I mean you can't, you can't breathe, there's no air. It, 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 just, it, it, gets, a bit, uh, it gets a bit too much. At Yorkshire, the once and went up what you call a river crossing. It was about 200 feet. And most pylons are the same structure, at the top. I could do on blindfolded, not knowing where to hang on. And this was a completely different structure. So it's like nine o'clock of the morning, I'm 200 foot in the air and swung ground as I normally do. And uh, the bar wasn't there. I was sort of whoosh, had a quick five-second knee trembler. Looked down, the van was you know the size of an egg box. And, uh, I think it did me the world of good actually. I think you could get too confident up there. Hello. I've slept. I mean, I, I, I'd be alive if I was to around and say that. I've never slept. I think I, sl I might have the odd slip every day. But that, that only makes you realise to yourself, well, do we, you know, the, do we do your next move a lot better next time? And that's what you say to yourself as you're coming down. Taken um, nine years off the towers and start started my own conservatory business and I did very well uh, until I tried to expand it to uh, Australia or I was going to attempt to expand it to Australia but then we hit the depression of the early 90s. Uh, so I thought, you know, they want enough work coming in, so I'll come back to the towers. I didn't really want to come back to it, but... Uh, to me, there was, there was no other type of work, really, that um, I could do. I know I could do the towers, so I came straight back into it. Oh, no, I'm only 29. But to me, I, I always turn around and say to myself that there's not a job on this earth that'll beat what I do. But nothing will ever beat the tower painting. It's just something that seems to just grow on me. I wish it hadn't. I wish I'd just walk, just say to myself, that's it. And just walk off. But I can't. I've said it every year. I always say to myself, I ain't coming back no more. But I always end up coming back. Get that phone call on, that's it. <laughs> back in the van, back in the driving seat of a van. I'll pass four in the morning, picking the blokes up to go and travel what, 180, 200 miles to do a day's work. Crazy, really, but it's in my blood. And I blame my dad for that. 